Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibration and waves. The topic of this video is periodic motion, and we want to know what traits characterize an object that undergoes periodic motion, and how do the quantities period, frequency, and amplitude describe such an object. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. This mass on the end of a spring is vibrating back and forth about a fixed position. When I think about how to describe it, two words come to mind. First of all, its motion is repeating. It occurs over and over again, cycle after cycle. And second, its motion is regular. It occurs in the same amount of time, cycle after cycle. Any object whose motion can be described by these two words, repeating and regular, is an object that's undergoing periodic motion. In the phrase periodic motion, you hear the word period, a physics term which means the amount of time that it takes to complete one full cycle of vibration. Any object that's undergoing periodic motion always takes the same amount of time to complete each consecutive cycle. Its period is constant. For this mass on the spring, if it takes 2.5 seconds to complete its first cycle, then it takes 2.5 seconds to complete its fifth cycle, and its ninth, ninth cycle, and so on. A mass on the end of a spring is not the only example of periodic motion. The back and forth motion of a bob hanging from a string, a pendulum, is also undergoing periodic motion. The rotation of the earth about its axis is also an example of periodic motion. It always takes 24 hours for the earth to complete one full rotational cycle. You can set your clock to that. And the orbit of the Earth about the Sun is another example of an object that is in periodic motion. It always takes 365.25 days for the Earth to orbit the Sun. And you can set your calendar by that one. If we were to place a motion detector below a vibrating mass on the end of a spring, in order to detect the position of that mass as a function of time, we would receive a plot that looks something like this. This plot has the shape of a sine wave. If you've ever plotted y equals sine of x on your graphing calculator, you would receive a plot that looks something like this. In this plot, we recognize that that mass is vibrating back and forth about a fixed position. Its nearest position to the motion detector is 20 centimeters, and its furthest distance from the motion detector is 120 centimeters. It's vibrating back and forth from 20 centimeters away to 120 centimeters away about the fixed position of 70 centimeters. This 70 centimeters position is known as the resting position. It's the position that this mass would assume if it were not vibrating up and down. The position of this mass varies as a function of the sign of the time. Any two quantities in which one quantity varies as a function of the sign of the other quantity are said to have a sinusoidal relationship. Earlier, I said there are two words that describe an object in periodic motion, regular and repeating. The object vibrates back and forth repeatedly over the course of time in a regular manner. We can look at this position time graph representing the motion of the vibrating mass on the end of the spring, and we notice that there's a shape on the graph that repeats itself. If you start at time equals zero in 70 centimeters position, you notice that the graph goes from 70 up to 120, back down to 70, then it goes down to 20, and back up to 70 again. That shape, up, down, down, up, repeats itself over and over and over again about this position time graph. So is it, re is it a regular repetition? That is, does it always take the same amount of time? In order to test, I could take that section of the graph, and I could just pull it out and just move it over, and then move it over again, and then move it over again, cycle after cycle after cycle, to see if it matches up. And what we notice is that it does match up. It always takes the same amount of time for that graph to go up, down, down, up. That period is a constant period. When we, if we were to say that one unit along that time axis equals a second, one square equals a second, then what we notice is that the first cycle goes from 0 to 6.3 seconds. The second cycle goes from 6.3 to 12.6 seconds. The third cycle goes from 12.6 seconds to 18.9 seconds and so on and so forth. What we notice is that the period is always 6.3 seconds. The period of an object that's undergoing periodic motion is always constant. 
A vibrating mass on the end of a spring experiences damping, the result of the interaction of the mass spring system with the surroundings. Friction, air resistance, and other forces cause the energy of the system to gradually dissipate to the surroundings over the course of time. And we would observe that the amplitude of that vibrating mass would gradually diminish over the course of time. Instead of vibrating from 120 centimeters at the high position to 20 centimeters at the low position, back and forth over the course of time, those two extreme positions would become closer to the resting position. But the period of vibration remains constant, consistent with an object in periodic motion. A plot of position versus time would look something like this. You'll notice that the amplitude of vibration diminishes over the course of time. When I say amplitude, I mean the amount of displacement of the mass from that resting position, denoted by the blue dot dashed line on this graph. Now as you see a damped mass on a spring, you don't want to say that it's slowing down because slowing down doesn't describe that mass on the spring. Slowing down refers to the speed of an object and as we'll discuss on the next slide, over the course of one cycle the mass on the spring is both speeding up and slowing down. So if slowing down doesn't describe the mass on the spring, how would you describe it? Well you would first of all use the term period is constant. The period is always the same. If you look at this particular graph and you look for the repeating par portion of the graph, you'll notice it takes two seconds for every cycle. You can just look and find that repeating section, go over to the next section, to the next section, cycle after cycle, and it's always taking two seconds. So the period is constant. It's not slowing down. Now what you do want to say is you want to say the amplitude is decreasing or diminishing over the course of time and that's because of damping. For a vibrating mass on a spring, the position varies sinusoidally as a function of the time. But position time is not the only sinusoidal relationship. So is the velocity time relationship. When we speak of the velocity in physics class, we're referring to the speed with a direction. It has a number, which represents how fast the object is going, and it has a plus minus sign, which tells us which direction the object is going. So when we say the velocity is positive one meters per second, we mean the speed is one meters per second and the direction it's moving is in the positive direction. Now here's the relationship between velocity time for a vibrating mass on a spring. You'll notice the sinusoidal look of this particular graph. If we go through the graph starting at a time of zero seconds from the zero seconds to the end of the graph, we would notice these types of changes. First, in the first approximately 1.6 seconds, this mass is slowing down from one meter per second second to zero meters per second and at 1.6 seconds it changes its direction and starts moving in the negative direction so we see negative velocities plotted and it begins to speed up from zero meters per second to one meter per second in the negative direction until about 3.2 3.3 seconds at that point in time the mass begins to slow back down from negative one meter per second to zero meters per second in the next 1.6 seconds at approximately 4.9 seconds, the mass is at moving zero meters per second, and it changes direction again as the line on the graph crosses over into the positive region, denoting that the mass is now moving in the positive direction, and it speeds up from about 4.9 seconds to about 6.3 seconds to a speed of one meters per second in the positive direction. Now this happens over and over and over again, repeatedly over the course of time. The mass slows down, changes direction, speeds up, slows down down, changes direction, speeds up, slows down, changes direction, on and on and on again. Now if you look for the repeating cycle on this graph, it starts high and then it goes down to the lowest point and then back up to the highest point. And that repeats itself over and over and over again over the course of time. And if you presume that this little square on the time axis represents one second, it happens over and over again every 6.3 seconds, a sign that the period is constant cycle after cycle after cycle. 
I've been using the term period to describe an object undergoing periodic motion. The term period answers the question, how much time does it take to complete a cycle? Another term we could use is the term frequency, which describes the number of complete vibrational cycles per unit of time. If period answers the question, how much time, then frequency answers the question, how often? Let's look at the formulas for period and frequency. The formula for period is period, or t, equal the time in seconds divided by the number of complete cycles. The equation for frequency is frequency equal, or f equal, the number of cycles divided by the time. You'll notice that these two expressions are reciprocals of one another. Now let's do an example. Suppose we have an object that completes 60 cycles in 10 seconds. Perhaps it's like me doing push-ups. In this situation, if we were to calculate the period, we would take the time, 15 seconds, and divide by the number of cycles, 60 cycles, and we'd get a result of 0.25 seconds per cycle. And if we were to calculate the frequency, we would take the number of cycles, 60, and divide it by the time, 15 seconds, and we would get 4.0 cycles per second. Now what do these numbers tell us or what do they mean? Well first, the period number of 0.25 seconds answers the question, how much time does it take Mr. H to do a push-up? And the frequency number of 4.0 cycles per second answers the question, how often does he complete a push-up? And the answer would be four times per second. The second thing that these numbers mean is It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, any and one of which would be good next steps. I've left links to each of these three in the description section of this video. You have a simulation page on a vibrating mass on a spring. You have a tutorial page on periodic motion, and you have a calculator pad problem set on the topic of frequency and period. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.